Hello, my name is Uri Urlavi. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Ride Vision. Ride Vision develops a collision avoidance technology for every two-wheeler, such as motorcycles, motorbikes, scooters, and even bicycles down the road. Today, I want to talk how to utilize AI and computer vision to solve a very challenging task of safety for these vehicles. It's a very unique vehicles that maneuver on the roads, and we need to have a very unique solution uh, in order to provide more safety for these vehicles. So before talking about the actual solution, let's review the problem, let's review the space and talk about the differences between a motorbike and a car. Let's start by talking about the actual global, uh, global environment. We have today 700 million motorbikes available across the globe, 79% of them located in the Asian region. And the vehicle has been used mostly in order to commute from one point to another. It's a great vehicle in order to use it in the congested environment. Uh, it maneuvers very nicely, comes very close to cars or between the cars. Uh, and that's why it's the first choice in order to maneuver quickly from one point to another. Uh, there's also some fun in this vehicle. People will enjoy some fun riding. And for that, they will go outside of the cities. Uh, they will do the fun riding and they will come back still exiting and entering the cities are the dangerous areas where the safety is the concern. And truly, if we look at the statistics, uh, two wheelers are still the most vulnerable vehicles on the roads. We're talking about 400,000 fatalities a year, almost a third of the global accidents that are credited to the two wheeler accidents. Now, surprisingly, when we said 79% of them located in the Asian region, only 43% are credited to the fatal accidents in, in, in this region, meaning that even in the Western countries, uh, the two wheelers, the motorbikes, remain to be one of the factors, one of the big issues in, term, in terms of the fatalities. And of course, that will only continue to grow due to global urbanization and congestions on the roads. So clearly, there is a gap that we need to address. Now, in addition, we need to understand that the majority of the accidents in the, in the motorbike uh, industry are uh, due to true collisions between a motorbike and a car. Uh, only less than 2% have been accredited to uh, accidents that happen due to the slipperiness and the oil spills, and et cetera. The majority, the sheer majority of the accidents are true collisions. Uh, frontal coll collisions, mainly forward collision, and some other collisions that happen in the frontal area and uh, some backward collisions or rear collisions that happen when a car doesn't observe us because we're a small object on, on the road and collides us from behind. If we look at the frontal area, we also see some definition, but in total, if we summarize that, uh, the 76% from those two branches are due to a motorbike versus a car collision uh, that happen. And these are the big collisions, the big uh, really problems that occur in the two-wheeler space uh, that are not being addressed. Now, why they're not being addressed, it, we can demonstrate very easily by reviewing this video. This video demonstrates a forward collision that occurs to, uh, to a biker, despite of being focused on the road, and etc. cetera. Um, so let me uh, show you how that looks like. Uh, we see here a biker that will be coming from uh, this uh, area uh, and will basically lane split the same uh, lane like this, uh, la like this vehicle in front of him. And the biker will be maneuvering, will be moving towards the middle lane, or will try at least to do it. So you can see that despite of being focused and actually looking uh, towards the frontal area, the biker will still collide with the car that just maneuvers uh, to that kind of uh, middle lane. So this is a clear forward collision and it usually happens because there is clear uh, differences between uh, uh, a car and a motorbike. And the, one of the biggest differences and why it's so challenging to build an ADAS, an advanced driver assistance system, and in our case, advanced rider assistance system uh, for two-wheeler is due to that zigzagging operation, due to that maneuverability of the bike, which is very, fast on one hand, it accelerates very fast, it decelerates very fast, it maneuvers between the cars or comes uh, uh, close to the cars. And in order to show you how unique it is, let me share with you a video obtained from Ride Vision Systems uh, that shows 
shows clearly uh, that interesting behavior. So uh, in order to do it, uh, we will basically come here. This is a, a footage obtained from right vision system. You will see that the bicycle will be coming here on the right side. You will be going here on the right side and then basically splitting two cars, going to the left side and then zigzagging again to the right side. And this is a bit of aggressive, but at least it emphasizes the unique challenges of the, pre the predictive path uh, of a bike that we need to actually calculate. So here we go. Uh, so we're coming on the right side, we lane split, we split uh, the cars, we go to the right side, pay attention that we lean and the bike vibrates as well. So in this case, despite of a bit of more aggressive kind of maneuverability, uh, there are no real critical alerts that's supposed uh, to be given to a rider because there's a clear path for a rider to maneuver between the cars or close to the cars. And this is one of the unique challenges that we need to deal with when talking about the differences between a motorbike and a car and the solution that we need to apply. And in order to formalize that uh, more formally, I would say, uh, let me uh, summarize that in that way. There is a clear difference between a rider and a driver in the psychology. A rider uh, has a very limited view due to the helmet and due to some other uh, issues like the open environment in which he operates, the noisy environment in which he operates, and etc. The driver has a very good view, so he can actually see what's going on. Uh, and despite of that, the driver actually is much more um, or less focused, he's much more uh, disturbed by the environment because he listens to music, to radio, sometimes plays with a mobile phone, and etc. The rider, on the other hand, is actually much more focused, but we are prone to two main issues, object fixation and tunnel visioning. In the object fixation, we will fixate on a closed car and we will observe that car as it maneuvers to ensure that it doesn't collide us, but the real danger will be coming from the other car. And despite of being focused on the road, uh, a, we are unable to shift our focus quickly from one object to another. This is exactly, if we know how to deliver, deliver good alerts to a rider, will help us to shift the focus from one dangerous object to another. Tunnel visioning happens when we start riding a little bit faster, then the right side and the left side are blurring. This is a brain trick. Uh, the blurring and basically we don't see what's happening there on the right side and the left side. That's additional limitation in terms of the view of the road. So uh, while a biker will be much more uh, responsive or much faster responsive to the alerts, the biker will still need to get alerts in non-intrusive way and it's a critical path because if he doesn't, if we, he's going to receive those alerts in non-disturbing in, in non disturbing way, sorry, then he will actually collide. Uh, versus a, a, car, a car driver, a car driver will need to receive this alert in much more uh, intense or still much bigger stimulus in order to shift his focus to the road. So those are the main differences in psychology and the main differences in the vehicle are the ones that are imperative in order to build a good solution uh, for these unique vehicles. First, it's a lightweight vehicle. It vibrates all the times. It tilts up and down when you accelerate or deaccelerate the bike. Uh, we can move the handlebar to the left and to the right as we go. But mainly we actually lean to the left and lean to the right. And all those transformations, all those basically challenging operations that we do the bike are uh, very hard for the algorithmic execution that we need to build, to the, for the software execution that we need to build in order to cope and understand the environment. But mostly the other challenging piece, as you have seen, is the predictive path because the bike will accelerate faster and deaccelerate faster uh, across the environment or, to, uh, or against the closer cars. And he will be coming very close to, um, uh, to the cars and sometimes even maneuver or zigzag within uh, the traffic as we have seen. And in order to predict where exactly the bike goes, that's uh, the biggest limitation in terms of the software, in terms of the sensors that need to analyze that and understand because then we need to uh, understand what are the other predictive paths from the other vehicles and mesh that against the predictive path of a bike in order to really say what is a critical or dangerous situation here for a biker. In that sense, in addition, a bike is a very
very small uh, object. Uh, we don't have enough space to put lots of sensors. There are some sensors that are totally not uh, suitable for a bike, like a LiDAR, for example. Uh, there are some other issues in terms of the leaning angles and in terms of the fusion operation. So there's lots of lots of limitations in cost. Uh, it's a cost effective uh, vehicle, so we can't pack it with too many sensors or with too many expensive sensors. And those are main differences that really create a challenging situation uh, for any other system to evolve. So what's the right vision approach in that sense? The right vision approach is very simple. We utilize two wide angle cameras. Uh, and that's already kind of a difference uh, versus any other automotive approach, uh, which usually, usually will uh, use um, narrow cameras. So we'll use, uh, we'll use uh, very, very expensive sensors like lighters and things like that. So we put very uh, cost effective sensors, wide angle camera here, wide angle camera here. And because we have two wide angle cameras, it allows us very nicely to analyze and fuse the data for, from almost 360 degrees uh, around the bike and basically analyze the environment uh, and then build a predictive path for a bike. Uh, and I will talk about that in a second. We deliver the alerts in a few ways. The first way is by visual cues. We have LED strips that we build on top of the mirrors. Or if we're talking about the OEM product, then the LED strips are already built in within the mirror. And those LED strips basically visually, uh, uh, visually alert or warn the riders on potential, uh, potential uh, hazards or problems on the road. I'll show you the video in a second. This is how that looks like. This is the aftermarket product. Uh, we, of course, has also the OEM product that is built uh, uh, together uh, as the bike is being assembled. Uh, this one is the after the fact, after you can retrofit your bike with this system. Um, it's been built out of those two cameras that I mentioned. This is the brain unit that usually been located under the seat of the bike. And those are the LED strips um, that we have discussed before uh, being put on top of the mirror. So let's review first the alerts that the system generates and then talk about the technological solution that we need to apply in order to solve these unique challenges that I mentioned before. So um, the system, as I mentioned, creates almost 360 degrees around the bike. Uh, this is being analyzed and based on that, the visual cues have been generated. So for example, here we have a forward right alert on a car that enters uh, or basically presses us from the right lane. Uh, okay, uh, just to show you a little bit more uh, kind of um, um, a robust implementation, this is an OEM product and the, uh, the product has already been integrated within the bike. Uh, the front camera is here, the rear camera is at the tail and you can see here the mirrors, the mirrors are integrated with LED strips. This is the frontal area. This will be the blind spots and dangerous overtakes that we'll show you in a second. So let's see how it, it works. As I play that, pay attention that the bike vibrates all the time, it leans, it rolls. So we have all those transformations I mentioned before. We'll start with a very simple left blind spot warning uh, here on the car that will be passing on the left side. Please note that this is kind of very usual, but Already here, we're talking about unusual situation because the bike leans here at 16 degrees. It's a very small lean angle. We can do, we can do much more. We can do 40s on the roundabouts on some other places. And this is actually challenging because there are sensors that above 40, 40 degrees, uh, 14 degrees, 14 degrees will not operate correctly. Um, so in this case, we'll see a car merging on the right lane of a roundabout and uh, we will see a right blind spot warning uh, giving to a biker on a lean angle as the car merges into the roundabout and we'll see the car in a second here. Now this is a very important to explain because a uh, blind spot is an essential alert for a biker. Uh, we need to move our head to the left and to the right in order to see what's going on and, and before we're turning or merging to any other lane. Uh, in that sense, uh, blind spots are crucial and they work differently than, uh, than any car implementation in our case because we predictively uh, build a path for any vehicle surrounding a motorbike. And even if that uh, vehicle is located a little bit uh, farther back, but then accelerates against the bike, then we predictively will uh, catch it 
it, analyze that and alert up to 25 meters back for the rider uh, to avoid the situation that he needs to move his head and look what's going on there. And just to explain why it's so important, because moving ahead at 100 kilometers an hour is about half a second of operation, which mean, means 15 meters of movement when your head is to the left or your head is to the right. This is a continuous uh, left blind spot warning. As we go, the car continues to uh, maintain, um, uh, basically, or continues to be in that dangerous uh, uh, blind area and the alert continues to walk. And the predictive alert that goes up to 25 meters has been demonstra demonstrated here. The bike is advanced uh, and then creates a bit of a gap against the car and then the car accelerates very harshly fast and uh, you can see how long the blind spot is uh, on. Uh, with that relative speed, we are talking about 14 meters here. Um, one, two, three, three and something seconds. That's, that's the difference. And at that relative speed, that was about 14 meters here. The next alert is the distance keeping violation. It's a configurable alert. Uh, in this case, it's 0 0.5 seconds until, until the next vehicle. Um, by the way, this alert is one level before the most critical alert that I will show you in a second. Um, and as we go and we continue to be in that dangerous area, we continue to be on despite of the vibrations, leaning out, etc. Unless you go back, all the cars we will see in a second will advance or you go to the left side, to the right side. So it's an important alert uh, to have. And finally, there's the critical alert. We accelerate and the alerts are blinking very, very, very fast. And if defined by the user, can escalate here with an audio alert to a Bluetooth headset that is located on your helmet device if you have such a Bluetooth headset. So this is a demonstration of the aftermarket product. This is our first version. Of course, there are additional alerts that are coming to that product. In addition, it acts as a dash cam, so it continues to record the footage for evidence purposes. Of course, if a rider chooses to do it, um, so that's in natural uh, the system. So coming back um, to the actual solution that we need to apply, of course, there are the classical buzzwords like the neural networks and the computer vision. Um, those two are being utilized together in order to solve the problem. Now, of course, as with many situations, you can think about, okay, let's basically find the objects, find the vehicles, and then basically uh, uh, try to calculate uh, where we are going or where they are going. It's a very, very tough operation as mentioned before. So what we did here is a bit of a unique approach in terms of, instead of trying to detect those objects and, and basically understand uh, track those objects, we are defining, we're trying to define what is the road. What is the road uh, from a neural network perspective? What is the road uh, and what is the use case of that road for being uh, more clear for a, ride, for, for a bike to move or less clear, more packed, less packed, and etc. So we analyze the entire scenario and based on that we basically define what is the clear path for a, a motorbike to move and then we predict that clear path from multiple dose analysis and creating a predictive path for a bike. And that will help us ultimately to understand where the bike moves, um, uh, take into account all those distortions that I mentioned before due to uh, maneuverability of the bike, and then calculate the potential trajectory of our bike against any potential trajectory of other vehicles and then understand whether it's a dangerous critical situation based on then create those alerts. So this is in nutshell how we utilize neural networks and computer vision, uh, not in a classical way, but in more sophisticated way of defining what is the road uh, ahead of us in order to build a predictive path or predictive vision for the bikes. Uh, that's it. Thank you very much. Uh, appreciate your time. If you have any questions, uh, now it's the time. Thank you very much.